So welcome everyone to this lecture series. Um, well, the short lecture series from me about what is linear algebra. So today, what are eigenvalues and what are eigenvectors? And as usual, I try to illustrate the, the concept um, in a maybe not uh, classical fashion. Okay, so how I would like to uh, li like you to think about eigenvectors and eigenvalues is as follows. So whenever you have a matrix, uh, then it, it actually is a transformation of a, of a vector space. That's, that's all it is. That's all what it does, right? You have some vectors in your vector space. It transforms those vectors into new vectors. So in those pictures, I have your R2, I have it twice, and I have a two by two real matrix, either this green one or here this red one. Um, and all these matrices are really doing is they take some vectors, as I said, and transform them into new vectors, right? They're like rotations, for example. In particular, this, this matrix really is just the rotation of the axes. It takes everything and rotates it by 90 degrees uh, in a counterclockwise direction. And you could see this in this picture. So this picture is basically what is called the vector field. That's just a fancy word of put the, the vectors um, it, with any starting point just uh, uh, in, in R2 and see what the matrix does. So um, the matrix takes those vectors and it rotates everything by 90 degrees. That's, that's what you can see here in this picture. And with no fixed vector here, I mean, you can already see there's no fixed axes. Um, the only vector I would like always to exclude is the origin. So the origin is kind of boring. The origin is always fixed. I don't care. Um, but you could see here, no matter where I would draw my, so let's say I would have a line here. This was a really bad line. Let's say I would have a line here and it's clearly not fixed. It, it would be rotated all the vectors pointing, point, really showing they're pointing outwards of, of, of my line or are really showing it would be rotated. So this matrix actually has no fixed vectors. It has no fixed axis. This matrix on the other hand, well, I can see two. I can see a red axis here, which is really much fixed along this line, right? All vectors on, well, it's, it's a bit hard to see, but basically all vectors along this line just stay on the line. They're not pointing outwards the line. They're not rotating the line. This line is really fixed by the, by the matrix. And here's another one. It's a bit harder to see because the vectors point in a slightly weird direction, but we'll see why they point in a slightly weird direction. But still, I mean, I think it's clearly visible that those two lines are fixed axes of the action of this matrix on, on R2. And whenever you have some action of something on whatever, you have some system that changes, it's always interesting to look at what, what stays fixed over time. And that's the whole idea of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So the eigenvectors are those that are basically fixed by the matrix, um, which is not quite true, as we will see in a second. And the eigenvalues measure the, how, how this is not quite true. But basically, these are the fixed vectors, the fixed points, fixed axes of the action of my matrix on my vector space. Um, so let's give it a little bit, uh, let's do a, a little bit more formal. So what I want is I have my matrix, like we call my matrix M. And um, I have some vector V and I basically want it to be fixed, but it's not quite what's usually happening. So this has almost never a solution, but we are, we are working in a linear setup. We are doing linear algebra. So what we really should do is we should allow that V is actually fixed up to a scalar lambda. So lambda is just a scalar. Uh, let's say in this case, in my underlying ground field R. Okay. So, and then you do this calculation. So here you go. Um, for example, so matrix times vector, well, this is what comes out, and it should be lambda times vector. In particular, you, you would like to 
you would like th these, this equation to hold, right? Um, and you just do the algebra, some kind of algebra autopilot, and you will see this is basically never going to happen, at least not, not with the real numbers, because lambda squared x would have to be minus x. Uh, this is only possible if x is zero in the real numbers. And you can see it in the picture. So the, the, there is no, no fixed vector. Every vector is kind of except, except the trivial solution, which are always excluded. Every vector is rotated around uh, around a, a, a ninety degree rotation uh, in counterclockwise direction. On the other hand, if you would do the, the same linear algebra here, the same kind of algebra autopilot matrix times vector, whatever you get, it should be lambda times vector. You would get two solutions, which were the red and the green one from here. So you could get the solution that lambda is one which just means everything points in the right direction. And you could get the solution that lambda is minus one, which means everything points in the upward, uh, opposite direction that you would expect it to point, but still it points in, the, in some direction that is, that is nice. And um, in this case, x equals y, for instance, one, one. And in this case, x equals minus y, for instance, one minus one. And you can see this in the picture. So my red axis is the x equals y axis, that's the diagonal. And uh, yeah, every vector points in the right direction. So every vector is 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 uh, is on this axis is an eigen. It's what is called an eigen vector of the matrix. It's fixed by the matrix um, up to the scalar lambda. And in this case, the scalar lambda is actually one. So it's it's really fixed by the matrix. There is the the other one, the green one. It points in this direction. It's the x equals minus one. And again, every vector on this line is an eigen vector of the matrix. Um, and now we understand why the orientation of the, of the vectors is a little bit weird, because they are fixed up to the side, which means they are flipped in their orientation. And that's that's all there is, basically all there is to say about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. The eigenvectors are exactly these solutions to, to this matrix times vector equals vector. Well, you have the scalar. Matrix times vector equals scalar times vector equation like the fixed vectors and the scalars are called the eigenvalues right so you're not you're not fixed in the strict sense like a fixed point of, of, of whatever a, a dynamical system of some some stable point of, of some um, operation but you are stable up to up to up to, up to a scalar basically which is good enough for almost everything you want um, let me give you two more examples um, so, for instance, you could take the most boring matrix ever, the <laughs> identity matrix, and it should fix everything. And yes, that's what's going to happen. So, lambda is one in this in this um, uh, equation you need to solve, and every vector is fixed. And you could see it in the picture. Every vector points in the correct direction. So, no matter where I would like to put my, here's a fixed axis. Uh, here's another one. Whatever. And all ooh, maybe this one, ooh, yeah. And all vectors point in the right direction, and this is kind of the right direction of the vectors to point, because well, this is the the plus plus quadrant, so every vector should point uh, kind of in the upwards rightwards direction. Every vector here should point in the leftwards upwards direction. So, so if everything is fixed, meaning that there could be quite a lot of eigenvectors of a matrix. Uh, but still, it's only one eigenvalue. Just everything is just fixed. Um, this is also a funny thing. So if you if you do the algebra here, it's, it's trivial, almost trivial algebra. You just do your algebra autopilot. You get two solutions. This one, um, x equals minus y, which is kind of visible here it's it's again this direction um this direction is fixed everything points kind of straight uh to the north west or to the south east and then there's this funny solution um well lambda equals zero and x equals y and this is kind of hard to see but kind of things are dying here as you can see 
And this is this funny solution, lambda equals zero. And kind of your wannabe fixed axis is around here. You just can't see it because lambda is zero and everything is dead. So let me just get rid of the axis and just let, let, me, let the points here. So what I want to say with this example is you have to be a bit careful in practice because zero is always a boring solution for a vector, but it's not necessarily a boring solution for, for an eigenvalue. So the eigenvalue zero is okay. Um, it is actually interesting. So here you go. Um, the eigenvector, the, 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 the zero vector is boring. So you exclude it. The zero vector is, is, is boring. We don't want it. But um, the zero eigenvalue, that's good. Um, and you should also take away that there might be many fixed vectors. Okay, so the formal definition that I will always do for completeness is, is really just is really just this. There is a non-zero vector such that mv equals lambda times v. And lambda is um, the scalar in my underlying ground field, whatever your ground field is. Real numbers, rational numbers, complex numbers, finite fields, whatever. Whatever your vector is. This, is. this is your solution. And this guy is called an eigenvector. And this guy is called an eigenvalue. Okay, and the main question, which I will answer in, in, in the follow-up video is actually, well, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Maybe I have convinced you that fixed points, fixed vectors of, of anything should be interesting, but how on earth can I compute those things, right? So that's what we will answer in, in another video. For now, just, just take it for granted that there is a, that there is a very nice algorithm to compute those guys. And it's important to know those values because they are kind of the, uh, the stable points of your system. Um, let me finish with an application actually, which I will also explain in, a, in another video. Um, for example, it's, it's eigenvectors and eigenvalues are fixed points of something. So they should have some applications. So for example, you would like to try to find the 100th power of some matrix. So you would like to find the 100th power of this matrix. And you do the calculation and it, it you don't want to do it. You, do, you don't see any pattern. And still the 100th power is pretty easy to compute. And the way to do it is as follows. And I will be more precise in my video about diagonalization. Um, you just calculate the eigenvalues of the matrix. Here you go, one and 0.5. Okay, that's what they are. And the eigenvalue, uh, the, the eigenvectors are roughly those. Uh, this one. And what you would do is you will take your eigenvectors and you put them in a matrix in this fashion. You have a matrix and it's inverse. And you take your eigenvalues and you put them on the diagonal matrix. Here you go. And the only thing you need to solve is that M to the 100 is actually equal to this crap, and I forgot a 100 here, the middle one to the 100, and just two matrices, and this is roughly, to just to only take the middle one to the 100, which is easy because it's diagonal. And this is roughly, uh, this. Is, well, you just do the calculation, nothing changes here, right? So this is just what it is. Um, so, it's just what it is, and you just do the calculation. It just you just need to multiply three matrices instead of one hundred matrices, and this easily generalizes to the thousandth power to the fifth million power. You only need to multiply three matrices, and you get roughly this result, which, which actually in this case is kind of what is n to the infinity, kind of the limit of the process. It's on the nose this matrix. Um, for m to the one hundred is it's basically this matrix, it's not quite. It's, it, there's a rounding error which I'm going to ignore. So this is already a very straightforward uh, and pretty nice application of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, which I'm going to explain in my diagonalization video. For now, just keep in mind, eigenvectors and eigenvalues are like fixed axes of your action of the matrices and kind of uh, those interesting by definition. Okay, thank you very much uh, for watching.